So to continue, question number 11. Define load factor of a hash table. Why is it important? Load factor alpha of a hash table is the ratio of the number of elements in the hash table to the table size. So the load factor describes how full a table currently is and it tells us also about the probability of collisions on the next inserted key. It is important to know the load factor of a hash table so that we can minimize collisions by keeping the load factor low, typically around 50%. Number 12. Discuss the disadvantages of open hashing as to its implementation. So when you implement open hashing, you are required to use a second data structure, which is linked list. And when you implement linked list, it requires us to use pointers. So with pointers, this will slow the algorithm down a bit because of the time required to allocate the new cells. And that's the problem of implementing open hashing in solving collisions. Number 13. How does closed hashing or open addressing solve collision? Name three common collision resolution strategies. Closed hashing or open addressing solve collision by trying alternate cells until an empty cell is found. So it uses different probing sequences. The most common are linear probing, quadratic probing, and double hashing. Number 14, given table size of 10 and using the standard hash function, insert key sequence 48, 67, 9, 57, 21, 78. Demonstrate the closed hash table using linear probing. Okay, this is how it works. So if our table size is 10 and we use the standard hash function, if we hash key 48 to our hash table, 48 modulo 10 will give you 8. So you can put 48 here. Okay. Then 67 modulo 10 will give you index 7. So we can put 67 here. Okay. So I don't know why the lines keep coming up. And 9 modulo 10 is 9 so we can hash 9 in index 9 and 57 modulo 7 is index 7 but as you can see index 7 is occupied so it will try the next cell which is index 8 but since it's also occupied so it will try the ninth cell which is also occupied so it wraps around and finds index 0 empty. So we will place 57 in index 0. Okay. Then next is key 21. So 21 modulo 10 is 1. So 1 is empty. So we can just insert 21 there. And the next is 78. So 78 modulo 10 is index 8 but index 8 is already occupied so it checks the next cell which is also occupied it wraps around and finds indices 0 and 1 occupied so it checks the next cell and it's empty so we will put 78 in index 2 okay okay so that's how linear probing works. So discuss the problem with linear probing. The problem with linear probing is what we call primary clustering, which means that the keys tend to cluster together in the hash table. So if we go back to the previous slide, you will notice that our hash table actually has two clusters one at the top and one down at the bottom okay so even if the table is relatively empty blocks of occupied cells start forming 
And this can be a bad idea if the table is expected to be more than half full because the performance will degrade. Number 16. Given the table size of 11, insert and using the standard hash function, insert key sequence 20, 30, 2, 13, 25, 24, 10, and 9. Demonstrate the closed hash table using quadratic probing. So with quadratic probing, the probing sequence will be incremented um, in powers of 2. So first it will try the next empty cell and then it will try the fourth cell then the ninth cell, sixteenth cell and so on. Okay, that's how quadratic probing works. So let's try to look at this example. So here our table size is 11. The first key to be inserted is 20. So 20 modulo 11 will give you 9. So we will insert 20 here. Okay. Then 30 modulo 11 will give you 8. So 30 here. Okay. Then 2 modulo 11 is 2. 13 modulo 11 is also 2. That's our first collision. So we will check first the next cell if it's empty. And yes, it's empty. So we can insert 13 and index 3. Okay. Then the next key to be inserted is 25. So 25 modulo 11 is 3. So it will check first the next cell if it's empty, which is index 4. And it's empty. So we can insert 25 there. Okay, then next is 24. So 24 modulo 11 is also 2, but index 2 is already occupied. So it will check the next cell, but it's occupied. So now we will try the fourth cell from the supposed index, which is index 2. So the fourth cell from index 2 is index 6. So we will insert 24 in index 6. Oops. Here. Okay. Then index, then next is 10. So 10 modulo 11 is 10. So 10 is empty. So we will put 10 there. Then the last key to be inserted is 9. So 9 modulo 11 is 9. But index 9 is occupied. So it checks the next cell and it's filled with key 10 and it tries the fourth cell from index 9 and that's index 2 okay so it's still occupied and it will try the ninth cell from index 9 so the ninth cell from index 9 is index 7 and it's empty so we will insert 9 on index 7 okay and that's how quadratic probing works. What is the problem with quadratic probing? The problem with quadratic probing is what we call second clustering. So second clustering may occur when elements that hash to the same position will probe the same alternate cells. So the probing sequence for keys that are mapped to the same index will be prolonged due to repeated conflicts along the probing sequence. Number 18. At what instances does quadratic probing guarantee that a new element can always be inserted? You can always insert a new element using quadratic probing when the table size is prime and the table is at least half empty. So you need to check always the load factor.